thought of a purely objective society in regards to an economical structure, what would happen to our current country as far as our economic system if we had an objective system, if we ran, uh, if we got back to a Puritan point of view, to with, Puritan, did you say? well, a somewhat purist point of view, or well, now, pure and Puritan, you without can... religion. Yeah, well, Puritan without religion is, uh, as like Santa Claus without Mrs. Uh, Claus, you know. Uh, Puritan is the name of a religion, so let's just drop that and just call it pure. Pure, okay. Now, well, what do you mean, what would happen? What would happen? I could answer you. We'd have tremendous wealth. Everybody who wanted a job would have one. Uh, education system would, would be fantastic. Medical discoveries would be so unhampered that our life expectancy would probably be 150. Uh, you would have fantastic dramas on TV uh, and in the movies. Uh, I don't know, every, every aspect of the world would be transformed beyond your wildest dreams, but you obviously don't think that's going to happen. Who would, who would regulate? Well, I mean, you need some regulation. The, well, you tell me what regulation you need. The only, quote, regulation that there would be would be any time somebody tried to engage in a criminal act, an act of aggression or fraud or force, the government would step in and put an end to it. But there would be no other regulation. Now, you tell me an example of the kind of regulation that you think would be necessary. Well, I think that in today's current society, we have so much crime and so much fraud that without, it just seems to me that the government would have a, a very difficult time well, dealing with all that. Uh, that. I think you could probably give a better example, but as far as crime is concerned, there is a reason why we have so much crime. I happen to have given a speech last year called What to Do About Crime. And I traced the statistics. You know that the crime rate in the whole Western world fell for over a century, from the mid-19th century, got lower and lower and lower until guess what decade? The 1960s, in which it turned around and has gone straight up, and they have a little bubble down now, which is making the headlines meaningless statistical blip. Now, why do you think crime turned around and became in incredible after a whole century of dropping, precisely because of the ideas that changed. The 60s is beloved by certain type of intellectuals because that's when the original American philosophy was finally thrown out and the counterculture came in as being the culture with the idea that, you know, there are no absolutes anymore, anything goes, morally speaking, you should live for the community, Love is more important than personal happiness. The, uh, reality is what you reach on drugs, etc. They threw the whole philosophy out. And in methods and by definite steps that I show in this talk, which is printed so you can get it, I show how and why that led and necessarily leads to an escalation of crime. But in a proper, this isn't simply an example of the collapse of the mixed economy. All the things which people blame on capitalism are actually not the fault of capitalism, but of the element of government that it's mixed with, which is corrupting, and it's just getting worse and worse as it goes, and the rise of crime is just one such thing. Now, if you read a book called Capitalism, the Unknown Ideal by Ayn Rand, she takes every standard charge against capitalism. Monopolies, depressions, imperialism and war, adulterated food and drugs, you name it, the works and answers it one at a time, shows why in theory this is bizarre, why in practice the real culprit was the government violating capitalism, and why the only solution is laissez-faire. So, uh, and there, by the way, as far as pure economics is concerned, uh, I would suggest to you a very good economist uh, named Ludwig von Mises. He writes big tomes, but on, on the subject of economics, he's very good.